And I'm like, where? I was like, where the <laughs> fuck did this come from? I was not prepared for this. Brett, don't worry about where it came from. Yeah, don't worry about where it came from. <laughs> That's a future episode. But. <laughs> the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the big bad fig cast my name is brett also known as geek over 40 and with me today i have my co-host carrie or as you may know her as kirpy and her bricks say hello and she's muted and she's still muted. I don't know how there that happened. There you go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> so you're fresh back from Seattle Con, correct? Um, yes. Well, fresh-ish. It was uh, it's a week or so ago. A couple Two weeks, weeks ago, ago, right? A couple weeks ago. Two weeks yeah. ago, yeah. And for those, this will probably drop before this episode drops, but you can find her on Brick Chat. Another podcast centered around the customs community. Uh, Carrie and Denise, also if you remember Brickcheck, was on there to give their do a little recap since uh, Thrawn Bills was there as well, and they get to share their experiences. So I encourage you to check it out. My guest today is a big deal. He is mini bigs. <laughs> Al, can you go and say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. So Al's been in the game for over <laughs> over a decade, right? Yep, it's been uh. Since 2008, however long that is. Oh wow! So does that? That's earlier than than Citizen Brick, even. Yeah. So real quick before we get really into this, I want to make another shout out to my buddy Billy BMF4. He did an excellent interview with Al back in January 2022. So we may not touch on the same things, obviously. So if you want some more insights on the inner workings of Mini Bigs, and also just want to discover a great podcast, please check out Bricks and Banter. I'll make sure to put a link in the show notes to that particular episode. And then without further ado, we're going to go on and do our own thing. Al, I do have one quick question that's been asked a lot. Are you mini bigs full time? No, I'm not. And then I do this part time, like when I get home and on weekends, stuff like that. So I did have several questions from the audience, which honestly, I just, I've been working on the next episode or recording tomorrow and I haven't had a chance to really vet so we're just gonna do a, f- a drive-by shooting of those questions towards the end of the episode nice. and see which ones we haven't covered already again i mentioned you have been on the bricks and banner podcast so you've kind of went really in depth there regarding your your inner your, your beginnings but one thing i did want to call out that i thought was interesting is that you started off selling toys on ebay uh it was ebay and amazon yeah back in like 2007 or something like that so how does that translate into suddenly printing Lego? It was a, it was like a slow kind of transition because I, I think I think I was one of the first people to sell individual Lego figures on Amazon, and we were selling like Star Wars stuff, and I think there was Indiana Jones and a couple other licensed Lego sets and stuff. So I was like breaking them down and just selling individual figures. And it was when the first Iron Man movie came out. I'm like, man, that was before they had the Marvel license. I'm like, that would be sweet to have some of these like Iron Man as like Lego figures. And I did some research and I got into doing like water slide decals. And it was a lot of fun. So I'm like, you know, I'm selling the other Lego figures on there. I'm going to try and sell one of these, you know. And it actually went pretty well. So that's what that's when I started. Did you advertise it as custom Lego or just call it like decaled Lego or? Yeah, I think since, I since that was just, kind of new, a newer thing on the market. I, I don't remember exactly. I think I just said custom Lego minifigure because there there were like water slide decals, so you could they were like definitely not like <laughs> normal Lego figures, you know, because they had to like overcoat them and stuff. How did they compare to uh, modern decaled Legos? You know, I haven't seen a lot of modern ones, to be honest with you. Uh, well, hopefully in the future, I should have, I have a cut two decals in particular, uh, Bendel Bricks and Bo Bricks. Really great guys. The other ones who did my Spidey Clone Troopers that you may have seen on video once or twice. Mm, so okay. we're going to do yeah. a Master Series episode on decaling itself and 
learn how they pull that crap off because I certainly do not have the steady hands for it. Right. Yeah. I, I've seen their stuff on Instagram, I think, but I've never seen one like in person, you know, I would like to though. I do want to say that in Canada, we say decal. So hearing everyone say decals. <laughs> you say what? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> we say decal. Wow. Like decaline. Or like, is that yeah. short for like declaration or? No, because decal, like dec, decal, decal, but faster. All right, I'm fascinated wow. by this. We're, we're going to keep this going. This is it spe- how's it spelled? It's spelled the D- same, right? D E C E L. Uh-huh. We just say it. I'm it, thinking like maybe it's maybe right it was two way. words like deck all like all on deck or <laughs> attention on deck. No, I was just slowing it down for you. <laughs> I need that sometimes. Deckle, deckle. It's like, well, it's like, Fun fact. you know, I'm thinking of like, you know, advertisement and advertisement. Mm. But you know, which one I like is uh, British say aluminium instead of aluminum. Yes. That's a good, whenever I hear like Bear oh, Grylls yeah. say it or whatever, I, I think it's great. He says glossier. Make foil well, sounds sexy. Yeah. But uh, all right. So back, back to you, man. <laughs> Sorry. So CB was your printer for quite some time. Yeah. Right. And I recall you saying that there was a time when you were anxious to get things done, but you realized Joe was kind of anxious to work on his own thing because he was working on a lot of stuff at the same time. And I was curious, how, now that you've grown into your own and you've got people coming to you left and right asking to make things, do you find somehow like <laughs> the roles have reversed and oh, now you're on the other side of the coin? Yeah. Like <laughs> when he first talked to me about it, about not, uh, being able to take the commission jobs anymore. I mean, we, we'd worked together for like eight years at that point. So it had been a while, but the first few commission jobs I did, I'm like, okay, now I get it. This is like, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of work for someone else. You know, it's not something you I'm super passionate about necessarily. So uh, I totally understand. Well, also you're, you're a party of one. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even your full-time job. And I think that's the one thing that through these interviews I've done have become a pattern that a lot of folks didn't realize is, you know, with Phoenix Customs, with Jocka Brick, with you and all these others, they are this is not their full-time. I mean, they're passionate about, it, but it's not the it's not what's putting the food on the table. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised by that too, actually, especially with Jocka and stuff cuz his figures come out pretty regularly. And they're so like elite level stuff. It's it surprised me when I heard he did it like part time. Yeah, well, yeah, he's got a great factory agreement, that's for sure. And I think he I think over time, because his team is small, but they've been together for so long, they've kind of worked out all the kinks. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they pull off in the future. I was surprised to hear about his team too. He has so many people he works with. It, that must be kind of difficult to keep everything streamlined and yeah, going he's basically direction. a project manager at that point yeah going to designing now for a while you were using you were you had hired designers and whatnot but it seems like you've been doing a lot of more designing on your own is that something you always aspired to or just something you fell into yeah i've always aspired to it i've started working with more artists actually there's quite a few now i've worked with but i was never really confident in it because i haven't really used uh, Adobe Illustrator a lot. And I know that's where almost everybody draws everything. And I taught myself how to use uh, Procreate. And so I've been learning that slowly over the past like nine months or something. And stuff's getting easier and easier because I, I can like vision it in my head. I just like couldn't do it in Illustrator because I just hadn't put the time in to learn the program yet. But Pro- Procreate was pretty easy to pick up. So I, I'm doing more and more. Sometimes we become, uh, as as a business owner, you become kind of entrapped where you're building. You want you got to find that balance between what you want to make as opposed to what you know will sell. Do you feel you're in a position where you can make those risky choices, or do you feel like you're still kind of just building your brand? And because I mean, you've been established for a while, but it seems like you're doing more and more extravagant things lately. Like the recent tattoo heads have been awesome. Um, all the major new face designs you've been doing is really good. And the legs have always been a hit, but I'm just curious if you felt like you've got that flexibility now that, you know, you just. 
Yeah, you've, you've always come across so humble. <laughs> and, and and I remember one time, I'm sorry, but I remember one time you we were discussing something and you're like, oh, I can't believe you looped me in with such and such and such and such. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're mini bigs. <laughs> you know, you've got a following. <laughs> you, know, you know, you've got fandom and it, it didn't seem to click. Right. So, no, uh, it, still, it still hasn't clicked. I just kind of like make what I like, you know, I kind of, uh, I don't worry about sales too much. If I know something is a little strange i just make less of it you know because i am like a one-man operation and it's part-time i can't do some riskier stuff but it seems like the crazier the stuff is almost like the better it does so i'm usually wrong about it like something i think would be like a super hit i'll end up with in my little bin for a year and a half or something and other stuff will sell out in like 10 minutes i'm like i'm always wrong but it's not so. That's okay too. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I love doing every time you do a drop is I'll I'll get my stuff, get out, and I'll just still stay at the site. I and mean, I've talked to others about this. We'll just stay on the website and keep refreshing the page and watching all the little X. Ex- I do that too. Yeah, you do that too? Yeah. I don't know. I just love doing that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it's like, go, go, go out. out, go. <laughs> and we just refresh and refresh and watch all the colors sell out one by one. Yeah. We're trying to oh, guess cool. which will be the last one. I think it's usually like the earth tones that usually stay around the most. Tan. Yeah. The browns and the greens. Yeah. yeah. Tans always last. Yeah. Like. And then I'm always like, shit, I should have picked up that color, but now it's sold oh, out. Every time it's like, did you get this one? I'm every like, time. oh, that was there. It's like, oh yeah, it was the bottom. I was like, I didn't think about the bottom. Uh, yeah. The list is getting <laughs> pretty big now. I just listed uh, the new tattoo head I just finished. And I think there was 32, 32 different colors. I'm pretty sure. So the the, oh, yeah. less, the list well, is huge. That's why I'm glad I stick to one color. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because, like, you know, I get to know you guys. I want to support you. But I also need to, like, pay my mortgage <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and feed my children. You know, it's always like, I think it was the last three drops I've apologized to you in DMs. I'm like, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a small, small card this time. <laughs> you, you have, I feel you bad. Need, you need to stop doing that. I just feel, it's, it's unhealthy, I know. <laughs> But uh, I'm like, I know it's going to sell it regardless. You know, I watch the X's you know, show. Up. But uh, obviously, I, f- it's, I think it's pretty clear. Music is a very big influence on you and on your creations. Uh, mm-hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about that? You mean the like the record tiles I did? Well, I mean, since the beginning, everyone you've done when you back when you did, you know, Biggie, you right. glad for Gambino, the the, the recent uh, album tiles. It just seems like there's always like a I mean, even, in, you know, it just seems like there's music's always been a, a big part. And you know you've yeah, got great I think, taste in music. By the way. I think it was like, um, <laughs> oh, thank you. I think it was like underrepresented for a long time. You know, there was like because there's not a lot of companies that do pop culture at all. You know, and mostly it's superhero or Star Wars or whatever. And there was like my all-time favorite artists, and like just nobody was doing them. You know, and so I'm like, you know who could do it best? Citizen Brick. So I like called him up and I think Biggie was probably the first one and probably the best one. It was just, that's just my favorite figure of all time, I think. But yeah, it just feels like they were underrepresented for a long time. And it's just a part of pop culture. I thought could use the Lego treatment, you know? You know, if you did a call out recently for what's your dream figs you'd like to see made. And in terms of musicians, a lot of folks wanted MF Doom. And he, because he has such oh, a distinct yeah. look, and he was such a prolific artist. Um, I think that'd be amazing if anyone would pull it off. We don't, we don't even have a good Doctor Doom fig, so if we get an MF Doom fig, I'd be happy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So that mask is tricky, though. It's oh, definitely... I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Yeah, I'm armchair quarterback in this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might need that for someone else. That's like a tough molded piece. <laughs> so. Carrie, you had some questions about about pricing, did you not? Yep. Let me pull up my Uh-oh. script. <laughs> There's going to be some hard hitting questions. No. Brett, Brett made oh, it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, that was a suggestion. You didn't have to copy <laughs> word for word. <laughs> Whatever makes you comfortable, well, you say it however you want to say it. No, I like how you said it. So, okay. <clears throat> so, Al, over time, we've noticed that some parts have gone up in price based on the color. Can you break down what is considered an exotic piece and how that affects pricing? Oh, the well, most of my parts I get, I get from Lego directly. 
and they've got like a pretty good library of like say heads like blank heads you know and uh and they're all the same price except for glow in the dark is like a dollar 20 instead of eight cents or something so usually stuff like glow in the dark i just make like a dollar more or something like that but there are like the more exotic pieces that are like have to be either wipes or get them from BrickLink, you know, and the prices are all over the place on BrickLink. So it kind of just depends on how much I have to pay for the piece. And then I kind of like charge differently, depending. Yeah, I think another another misconception is people think you guys are making money hand over fist with, you know, every part sold. Right. I think you're just, you know, rolling in dough and they don't understand the part costs. And we'll go into this a little bit later when we talk about commissions, but it was eye-opening for me as someone who's never bought monofigs in bulk. And yeah, those, those, those prices go up quick. Yeah. They're going quick. beyond the normal. Yeah. I try um, and keep my prices. Them. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole nother thing. You have to buy like certain colors from different people and you end up getting like 10 different packages, each with a different color in them and stuff. And then there's, you have to do assembly as well. Correct. What do you do? Disassembly before you print to reassemble. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the part and stuff. But also, I try and keep my prices the same unless it's, like, a really rare part that I had to pay a lot for, you know? Because, like, some parts come blank. What would you say are, like, one of the more difficult parts to colors to acquire at this point? In terms um, of rarity and then, of course, in terms of price? Aqua legs. Carrie, you know all about that. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, like, light pink legs. Like, you, everyone wants the colors and they don't. They don't. They just don't really know, you know. When you go on Brick Link and look for light pink legs, and they're nine dollars a piece, you know. So a lot of times I just avoid those colors because the prices are just crazy, and then including like the transparent pieces are all like really expensive and stuff like that. I remember when you did the first Spider-Man fig, not Frank, but the actual Simbit Spider-Man fig. Mm-hmm. You know, I went on a spending spree. And I think that's the start of our relationship. You did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got I got all the colors, and I'm still proud of that collection. No, you said, "Hey, I've got these other special colors." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, you got the trans clear," and you know, I was familiar with the trans blue and trans orange. And then you're like, well, "I've got these other ones," and here comes satin and glitter. <laughs> and I'm like, "Where?" I was like, "Where the fuck did this come from?" I was not prepared for this. Brett, don't worry about where it came from. Yeah, don't worry about where it came from. Just... No, that's a future episode. But <laughs> but no, it's I was just like. I thought I had everything covered. And you're like, well, I was like, okay, these, this is all that I'm going to have to worry about paying for. And then you're like, well, I've got these other colors. Yeah. I was like, I sprite about glow in the dark. That's cool. I'll grab that. And then you're like, oh, I got the satin. And the satin, the pearl satin is probably my favorite. Yeah, those are um, The really white pretty. satin. Um, the blue satin is really nice too, but I think the white one's my favorite just because it's got that prismatic look to it. Yeah, that threw me for a loop when suddenly I've got purple glitter and blue glitter. And then we've got glitter trance. And now they're all combining on <laughs> it's like Pokemon, they're evolving. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you when you when you announced Miles, I was like, oh dear lord, here we go again. <laughs> I was like, I got I gotta trim it back a little bit. Yeah. But I got a good haul. I got a good haul. Yeah, you did. It's a, it's so so. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I think I got like two or something. <laughs> yeah, those are a little pricier. Then you did the wrestler yeah. spidey, and I'm like, God dang it. Like my worst yeah. fear is citizen brick color misprint culture mixed with freaking you know custom lego i think my colors for that one were more limited than the other spider-man i was like doing like combos and stuff because he had a different color torso than legs so i just made some like Mm -hmm. quick combos and i don't think there was many options for that one i was just printing that that new spider-man related figure and i lined up all these red torsos because i love red you know, and I like lined them all mm-hmm. up to like do like color variants of that one. And I went to print it and I'm like, I can't print red on red. You know, you can be able to see it. And I got all sad about it. I had to put them all away. It kind of looks cool though. Like a little bit. It can. Yeah. It depends on how close the ink is, but it's, this one was like almost like dead on. I'm like, I can't even see it. I did make one. I couldn't see it and I couldn't see it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Better fail fast and, you know commit and then see then it pivot as needed oh my question is back to like legs and bricklink and stuff 
I just remember when I was way back in the day when I was trying to order stuff. What's up with the yellow legs? Like, how come you just cannot get them? I think, I think Lego doesn't make them except for the Everyone Is Awesome set. They did because those are all mono figs, but otherwise, it just looks like a naked Lego person. So I think they kind of avoid the yellow legs and the yellow hips because yeah, they've been hard to get forever. Yeah, yeah. and if you get them, they're very expensive. Yeah, you had to buy like. A, there were some sets of legs that just had yellow hips with different color legs. And you have to buy different legs that had yellow legs, but different color hips. Like they would never put them together. Then I got a bunch of those, but they were like used because they're pretty old, you know, and like the quality wasn't good enough. They were all like banged up and stuff. So I couldn't even use them. Bummer. But the everyone is awesome set. Every set comes with one, which is pretty cool, but they're just really expensive. Because that's the only one, I think. All right. Well, going back to printing and commissions. um, Actually, go back to printing. The uh, so the miles was a hit by far. You know, you had that awesome promo video by Nick. Yeah, yeah, that video was cool. I went back and watched it again like last week. (laughs) So it's an awesome video. And then the wrestler was also pretty well received. Bone slot did pretty well, did he not? Yeah, the The, standard um, one. Wrestler from Spice set. Yeah. I think I still have a couple of stragglers of like the variant colors, but the standard sold out. Yeah, I saw a lot of um, folks that don't normally buy customs that went for that one. Yeah, that's cool. So, cool. Hoping to like complete a set, especially with the renewal of the classic Toby coming out. Um, well, not renewal of classic Toby, but the new Toby fig coming out. I think people got really excited when they saw a chance they could, you know, have the bone saw with it. That, that was really neat. Right. Yeah. That was, that was Mike's idea who does a lot of my art, Mike McHugh, a uh, citizen hoarder, is his name on Instagram. He does a lot of my, a lot of my art. And that was, that was his idea. He brought it to me. He's like, this would be really cool. And I'm like, yes, it would. That's awesome. And so I made it and it turned out really well. And it made a lot of people happy. It was, it was great. Yeah. I think he hit the nostalgia factor pretty hard. There were a lot of folks that, and being able to complete that, you know, something that they wish they had as a child. Right. Yeah. So. There's every time someone asks me uh, for someone that will print pad that does commissions, I always send them your way. (laughs) And then I always hear back. Yeah, they don't, they're not taking commissions right now. There've been a couple that wanted a, a low quantity that wouldn't justify doing a commission. I understand that from a business standpoint, Mm -hmm. a parts materials, you know, cost. but what, what is your current situation with, with commissions? Should I stop sending people your way? Yeah, you probably should. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I've got, I don't even know how many figures. I think it's, I think that it's around 11 figures. I've got art done for, and I've got the pieces and I've got even now the transparencies ready to make them. And I just, I'm so slow because I'm like too about myself part time. And I just got this big line of work like set up. So I really don't have any. You're set for the year, aren't you? I think you said at one point you were set for the year. Yeah, I'm probably half of next year, to be honest with you. I The only time I ever do, because sometimes you'll probably see commissions, but it's usually for like someone who's a really good friend or something or something. Or it could be something like really simple, like a one color print or something. But I can't I can't really take on uh, the full figures and stuff like that. Well, got one more commission coming up. So I've, yeah. I've made it. I've, I've announced it on my my Instagram a while ago, um, a long time ago, you know, so I'm trying to get my sig fig made. Um, you're doing the printing for it. I thank you very much. Yeah, it is on the um, back burner though, Brett, just so you know, it'll probably be late. You know what? I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever it takes, as long as it's, I don't want you to work in the press angry. So you just do, you do whatever you got to do. <laughs> Take get, you know, the, whatever builds the business first is what's important. Um, I can, I can always wait. Uh, no, but, I'm just joking. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely work it in soon, for sure. Well, I, I was really so. Just a bit of backstory on this. So I've been wanting a sig fig for a while. I have one that I parted together through parts off Firestar or the podcast and Geek Forty logos that Jaka had printed for me, which I'm really grateful for. And then I had my own painted vans that I did on on some figs. But now I've got uh, you know nice printed legs from you that, oh, nice. <laughs> that I've put. Yeah, from the last drop, I bought legs just for my sig fig. Uh, I like those sig figs. So, 
like having a chance to design a sig fig was really, really cool. And my, it's going to be very, very simple for those who don't know. It's just my goofy ass face and my logo on the torso. Nothing crazy. But um, it looks good, though. It looks you really designed clean. the face. It looks good. I did. You yeah. designed the face. And as you said, uh, I've been staring at your face for hours. <laughs> 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 and, what's, and what's funny is you actually nailed it because you literally traced my glasses. I did. It looks it looks really impressive. And so I was so excited that I went around asking some folks, you know, hey, I know you collect certain colors. Like, Carrie, what color would you like this printed on? And so I made a, so I, I got my I got my my parts list together, what I needed to have both the generic, regular, standard issue, Geek 40 over 40 fig, and the misprints. And man, people have some expensive tastes. <laughs> so, it's like, yeah. oh, I want this on coral. I want this in glow in the dark. I want this. Yeah. And, the list um, was long and exotic, that's for sure. It was. It really was. And I had to do a lot of shopping around, but thank you. I appreciate your help in securing those. Uh, I haven't seen the bill for that yet. I'm just kind of worried. <laughs> 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 so uh, it's it's definitely going to happen. And um, so, yeah, but yeah, I look forward to it. everyone's. So I have a lot of folks that ask me, how's this going? Is it coming out yet? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm working on it. I'm getting the parts. But yeah, I be, think we started that back in project. February. February or was March, it? I think we started talking about this. Oh, wow. It feels like that. It feels like forever ago because I was like, podcast geek exchange sig fig i was like on this whole ramble of these new projects i was going to do and good things take time but speaking of good things that took time and turned out great mike myers yeah oh baby that figure was phenomenal thank you and i remember when nick came to me with the preliminary sketches that he and mike had drawn up he said something like oh brett's helped i didn't help with the design i just said hey i like these eyes better than these eyes or whatever or, you know, crinkle the brow. I, I didn't really do much. I was just sitting back watching the process and all. And it got me amped for when I would do my own sig fig thing. But uh, that thing came out phenomenal. And uh, I, I mean, there have been other brands that have said, you know, well, why make a Michael Miles fig when Biggs has already done a great job? So yeah, that's, that's a nice compliment. Yeah, that was yeah, Nick. Nick messaged me one day. And he's like, Hey, would you ever be interested in doing something like this? I'm like, Yeah. He's like, boom, and like sent me the artwork, and it was like all finished. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it looks. And it was like print quality, like the designs were perfect already. I'm like, oh yeah, let's do it. That was yeah. I mean, it sold out quick, didn't it? Yeah, I think it was like eight minutes or something. And I had made a lot, like more than I usually do. Like usually, I make around 150 ish, depending on the design and stuff. I think I made like 250 of that one and it just sold out so fast. Yeah. The first batch. Wow. That is really impressive. Um, and then how, how big was the second batch? About the same. It was about um, 230, I think something like that. Yeah, cause and that's still like sold one out. of the, yeah, that was one of the few things I did to pre-order on. And right when the first one sold out, I had like a million messages on Instagram and I'm like, well, why couldn't I make more? You know, like I could get all the parts. It would just take time for all the parts to arrive and everything. So, right, right. I think I said two months or something, and it ended up being about that. Oh, it was well worth it though, because it came out great. And then, you know, the misprints, of course, were always awesome. The secondhand market, these things always come about eventually, but I'm glad I didn't have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably, some will be popping up probably, because I sometimes, things just don't pop up if you only made like a hundred or 150 of something you just won't see them and but if i i made like almost 500 i mean they'll probably pop up sooner or later one other thing that i think we definitely need to talk to to talk about is i mean you've had some unprecedented growth not just from your your personal designs um, as an artist uh, your production levels and your demands but also al here is an official reseller for jaka cross check core and mini gazer these brands are mostly based in the eastern market uh through available through um, resellers available in china and taiwan it's not it's never happened before really where we can have um these figures available through a u.s reseller to which al you've also been very generous with your shipping discounts based on certain quantities of order or whatever if you want to specify that but um, i'm curious about how this all started with jaka it started when 
he had a two figure set come out. I, I've never really bought like the high end uh, superheroes or Star Wars before this because I mostly like collect pop culture stuff. Um, and he had that one set come out. It was Logan, and I can't remember the other character's name. X twenty three. So that set came out, and I'm like, sweet. Like, where can I buy this? You know. I'm like looking and looking and I've looked at his resellers and I'm like going down the list and I'm like, a lot of the websites weren't in English, you know, and they, none of them had like American currency. And I had never bought from any of these resellers before. And I was kind of lost, you know, I did end up buying one and I was like holding my breath because I'd never bought anything overseas. And oh, you should have reached out, man. We would have helped you. I know. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know you back then. And so I got it few like four months later whenever it came out and it was gorgeous and it was the first like ultra figure i've ever gotten of like that quality you know and like this jaka stuff is awesome i didn't even know about all the other brands um really i just stumbled upon that one and i was thinking about it and i'm like this i wish this was easier for american customers you know because i'm sure there's a lot of people who kind of went through the same thing i go through like you see these awesome figures and it's intimidating to go on some of these other websites and i'm like i'm gonna message jaka and see if that's something that would even be possible if i could like be that conduit you know to the american north american uh market and i messaged him he messaged me back and he was super cool and nice and we talked about it and he agreed to it like almost right away and um i think that was last november or something like that we first yeah, started up up. a year yeah and everyone was super smooth and sold quite a few figures and i'm like well maybe this is going really well and by then i was kind of like learning more about all the different brands and everything so i contacted a few more and i got a couple more on board and it's been going good yeah, I was really excited when you got Jaka on there. And then um, <laughs> I was like, who else you got coming up? And you're like, well, I'm talking to this person, this person. I was like, well, let me talk to Crosscheck. The idea is you get one, they start, to, they all start to fall, hopefully behind. And well, if you, and you had such a good thing going with Jaka, I'm like, well, he's, he's proven himself. He knows how to, because you, you also had to learn the whole pre order culture yeah, as well. Yeah, I wasn't used to that. Right. So that's, that's something different. And, and the people that your customers that are normally coming to you had to understand that new culture too. Has there been any confusion on that part? People pre-ordering a custom um, fig and then not wondering why it's not shipping? Not, I, I mean, I've probably gotten a couple messages, but not really. I think, unfortunately, I think the communities are very different. I think my normal like pop culture community who would buy stuff from me normally don't always buy the high end like superhero figs and things like that. So I'm not sure how much crossover there is, but um, there were probably a few that were used to buying my stuff, but I tried to be pretty clear that it's a pre-order. It's going to be a while, you know, <laughs> like different companies have different times and different figures have different times. So it's hard to even know really. Yeah. I mean, core just announced their first fig period. They came out of nowhere. Uh, their first figs already gonna, was on um, the pre orders ended what like a couple of weeks ago, and that fig's almost ready to ship already. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fast. I think I think it went really fast because it doesn't. I don't. I don't believe it has any like molded accessories or things like that. I think it's like a more of like a mono fig, and I think that saves a lot of time, honestly. But even by that standards, it still was super fast. Even taking oh no, it was. I mean, even Crosscheck has you know all their molded bad cowls and whatnot going on. So that's obviously going to take some more time. Yeah. But no, I've talked, I've talked to cross check on the side. I've talked to gazer after, after I connected you two together. Um, that was funny. Cause that happened like in the middle, I was literally standing inside a brick fair, but no, it was cross check. I was staying in, I was in brick fair <laughs> walking around talking to cross check, mm-hmm. trying to get them to connect with you. <laughs> and I thought you said, yeah, we'll talk to him. And then like, I thought it was gonna be like a week or two before I hear back. It was like 30 minutes later. Special announcement, and <laughs> you guys already worked out a deal. It's like, holy shit! Yeah, so, that went, Gazer went that pretty went really quickly fast. as well. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm not gonna 
dance around. You know, I know you had, we, you did have a previous uh, engagement with, um, with Mr. J and uh, we've tried to talk to other brands, but for those who may not have seen Al's post, there's the collectors in general don't see how messy it is behind the curtain when you're trying to negotiate, you know, these partnerships, you have to tiptoe around a lot of political sensitivities uh, within the industry and the reseller market. So sometimes things just don't work out. It was definitely not for any um, lack of trying and the door is definitely not closed on any brand in the future. Right. Yeah. I wanted to say I did reach an agreement with Mr. J and I announced it on my, uh, on my feed and stuff. And uh, it was just, I'm used, I was really used to dealing with Jock and Crush and uh, Gazer and Core all have open pre-orders. So it's like open for a certain amount of time and however many you sell, that's how many they make, you know. That's that's a relatively new pattern, right. actually. So I think it was just, it just happened. Those were my first four and that's the way they all did it, you know, with the open pre-orders. I know some of them just started doing that. And now I was talking with Mr. J, who's great, and we talked quite a bit and we thought we came to like a pretty good like arrangement and everything and then a uh, figure came out and because he makes such limited quantities the um the amount he could allocate to mini bigs was just kind of small and i didn't think i thought maybe if it went live and i had 30 people wanting to buy it 20 people were going to be left disappointed you know because they couldn't get it you know and so I, I talked to him and um, like if things change and you decide to go to an open pre-order or something like that, because even if it's five or 10 figures, it's not really worth it. Even with postage, like getting stuff express mailed to me, five or 10 figures, it's just too expensive for like a lower quantity like that. So it just wasn't going to work out right now. You know, hopefully it will someday. That makes absolute sense. And, you know, other resellers, you know, obviously there's that fear of losing customers to a new reseller, but they also are the same effect. They don't want to risk disappointing customers that have, they don't want to have, not have the demand, be able to meet demands. Right. And yeah. so hopefully, hopefully open pre-orders be, do become more the norm. Um, as long as, I think as long as a brand is showing that they're going to produce what they say they're going to produce and they build that reputation. I think pre-orders will be safe. It's comes the best of both worlds. You know, you, you know, you're going to get a chance to get it. They know how much they're going to sell. Um, there's not a lot of risk involved because if you do wait pre-order debate, that's a whole, that's a whole nother episode, which I don't even know if I'm brave enough to tackle. If you do wait the pre-orders, you'll see a lot less risk taking and you'll start seeing a lot of the people, you know, making the same thing over and over again. In fact, if you look at the current trends right now, we're seeing a lot of repetitive, uh, characters out there and they're all limited to quantity figs. Carrie, did you have anything you wanted to add? Well, I'm really surprised that, I don't know. I get the whole allure of having like, you know, a very small batch of something, but like most, like most all of his figs sell out like pretty quickly. So I'm surprised he hasn't started making more. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. I mean, he really hasn't had an issue moving any product. I mean, you go to any any, any reseller website and, uh, you know, his stuff's all sold out. So I don't know, maybe it's something he'll explore in the future, you yeah. know, as as the bigger brands, because Phoenix Customs has moved on to this, uh, Jaga, Crosscheck, you know, Richmond, Gazer, uh, Abnormal even does, limit, you know, open pre-orders. So I think as long as, as the bigger brands continue to do this and they're successful, perhaps they'll follow suit. I feel like a lot of his, like his number cards, his quantity is always like between 60 and 80. So I mean, I'm surprised he just hasn't even just upped it to like a hundred or yeah, something. That's been the, the, so 80 to 120 was always like the norm back in the day when they were doing limited quantities of things. And you're right. There was an allure of having this collectible item, limited quantity. But I think, I think that's not as prevalent in the Western market. We just want to have the product. We're all about mass production. And they want something that's, you know, what would you call them? Ultra figure <laughs> earlier. It's like past elite. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I, I got a series of questions here um, from, from the audience that I just want to read out loud. You go first. I got to find okay. them. <laughs> I DM'd them to you. <laughs> 
All right. So Jamel's Bricks asks, what keeps you motivated to keep creating and what inspires you? I just love it. You know, sometimes when I have like a big drop and stuff and I'm shipping out packages, and I'm kind of burnt out and it's like, oh, I'm going to need a few a little time, you know, and it'll be like two days. I'm like, let's go print. Like what's next? You know, I just get excited about it. I don't know. It's just in me, you know. All right. This comes from Minifig Brick Pick, also known as Aaron. If you don't follow him, you should because he's so cool. He's so nice. Um, little sweetie. So his question is, one of his questions is, what type of part, heads, legs, torsos, etc., are your favorite and why? Um, I really like printing heads. Um, because, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I like them because they're cheap. You know, <laughs> buy heads and they're they're pretty inexpensive and you can make some really weird stuff and not feel bad if you make 200 and only sell 50, you know, it's just basically your time you lost out on. And it does take a lot of time, but you know what I mean? It's not like a big financial hit and you can do some like really weird stuff and take some chances. And that's probably my favorite. Aaron also asks, how are you so cool? Please help. I want to be cool too. I don't know. I've just kind of always been this way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, I'm, I'm taking another question. <laughs> so Johnny Boom Bricks, also a great guy you need to follow. Oh, uh, yeah. What does he like? To, what, does, what does he like to do outside the community in real life? Oh, I don't really do anything. Uh, I don't know. I like TV. I like print. <laughs> I like watching shows with my wife. Um, I don't watch as many movies anymore, but I like I like those long ten episode season shows. You know, um, we watch a lot of those, and I just print and work and hang out with my wife. That's about it. My uh, my kids are uh, all grown up now. They're uh, twenty. I don't want, I don't want to get this wrong. They're twenty five and twenty two. So. Uh, they're always out doing their own thing. Uh, they're not out of the house, but they're <laughs> doing their own thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty uh, simple life over here. Sounds like a sweet life. Johnny Boombricks also asked, "Have you ever had an idea that just didn't translate well into a design?" That's a really good question. There have been things I printed that I wasn't like happy with necessarily like when it came out i'm like once the project was done and i take a long hard look i'm like i should have done this different and this different um i want to beg on my own certain products but there's like mistakes have been made and i wasn't like super happy with it and but that's kind of stuff that helps you grow and get better you know i struggled with a couple projects at the end of last year And it led me to doing something different with my film and the way I make plates. And it actually helped me make a big jump in my quality, I think. So um, as far as that stuff goes, it helps you grow when there's something you're not happy with. But generally, I don't make stuff I don't like, you know, so. Uh, With a three-peat, Johnny Boombricks once again asks, do you enjoy building with Lego? Do you collect minifigs or do you just wind up printing them alone? And that's it. I like to buy a lot of Lego sets with the intention of building them and end up (laughs) with a giant pile of awesome Lego sets. Um, I kind of have limited room to like display them, but uh, for a long time I was getting those, the modular buildings. I really love those. And uh, I got probably about six of those. They like all like click together, you know, and uh, I I buy a lot of Lego city. Yeah. I've I've got them like on a shelf, on two separate shelves, like in my basement, but um, I don't have them on the table or anything. It'd be cool to do that someday. It'd be really cool for like photography and stuff for my products, but. It can create so many narrative scenes and do so many cool things with it. Yeah, there's so so many cool things. Do seasonal things like, oh, it's Christmas time. I'm going to put the holiday lights on or, you know, it's Halloween time. Trying to break out the zombies. Right. Yeah, we've (laughs) got... um, like I think it was a Monster Hunter set. It was like a, like almost like a haunted mansion kind of thing, 
it was a pretty big set that we always put out for Halloween. And my wife loves the, uh, like the Christmas village sets. So we always put those out for mm-hmm. Christmas. And, uh, I also love those, those star Wars helmets and they start doing superhero helmets too. But I've got a lot of the star Wars ones. I think I've got five that are built and probably 10 that <laughs> aren't built yet. Yeah. I've got about, I think about six or oh, six or seven sets now that are sitting in the boxes. But um, yeah, it's again, it's a room issue. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons I love uh, minifigures too. It's because they don't take up a lot of space. You know, you can put 60 of them in a little display case. And um, I really love minifigures the most out of anything. I've always collected minifigures. They're, they're always my favorite. That's what gets me to buy a lot of those sets that I haven't built yet. Is just the minifigures inside of them. All right, this question comes from a fellow Canadian, and he is also a really cool guy, Ogre Bricks. Any plans for custom packaging? Yeah, I kind of go back and forth on that because sometimes I buy products from other companies because I'm a collector also, you know, and I buy a lot of like Sis and Brick and obviously like Jaka and uh, K-Town and True Red. I like all that stuff. And I love the packaging for the first minute because like Susan Bricks little uh, like blister packs are really good looking and stuff with the foil and they look nice. And then I rip it open and then I throw it out, you know. So I've kind of been on the fence about doing nicer packaging, but I always like to open my stuff and I like to put it in display cases and I like to take photos of it. So I kind of hope that's what people are buying my stuff for. So I've been just like putting them in baggies for now. That's one of the reasons I try and make like cool stickers and stuff to have like an extra little collectible to go with it. Depending and on you write game. notes sometimes. Yeah. The sometimes I write notes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes. But so, but I've kind of been looking at packaging in different ways. I did some clamshells for a while that a lot of companies use, but I didn't really like it necessarily so i kind of like keep going back and forth so i i've got like a custom case with like this the uh like the high-end stuff and they all come with like the fancy cases or whatever but they take up so much space and i don't want to take up people's space i just want my figure in their case and for them to enjoy it so instead of, instead of packaging make more make more badge bricks i love badge bricks <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah those I are should. fun so oh back <laughs> Damn, Johnny asked a lot of questions. Yeah, Johnny Boombrix, once again, wondering if he had a print background before starting Mini Bigs. I did not. I went into it super fresh. The uh, only experience I had was kind of, uh, I did a lot of like the decal stuff back in the day, but then there was a big gap where Citizen Brick did all my printing. So, um the only experience I have was going and visiting his HQ for half an hour <laughs> and watching uh, some videos on uh, YouTube. And I just kind of dove right in. I had never worked with inks before or anything like that. And look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say this wrong. This is also an, another nice guy. Everyone's just so nice. Shenandoah Brickworks. Okay, his question is, how do you decide pricing and or quantity of items, how large your backlog of ideas to print are? I guess you kind of answered some of that. The backlog is gigantic. Um, I figure figure out prices based on um, the pieces I'm using, but the vast majority of it is how much work it is. some figures are kind of simple and there's like a few colors on the front, a few on the back, on the head, and the parts aren't too expensive. I try and charge like 20 or maybe 25. Um, one of the more expensive ones I think was the Miles Fig, but that was like a giant printing project for me because I had like all the leg printing. I did inside the leg printing. I did side printing, side hip printing. It was like everything. And there was like multiple heads and I was like, probably the biggest project I've ever done. So that one was obviously more expensive. So it's basically just based on my time. 
MFJ Customs. Awesome, awesome dude. Big supporter of the podcast. Being a solo printer, what is the biggest struggle you come across when making parts? Um, custom mixing colors is kind of tough for me. I ask my wife for a lot of help because she like she does a lot of art stuff and she like reads a book on color theory and stuff like that. So I'll be, I'll show her a color and be like, what do I do with this to make it look like that? She's like, well, add some purple, add some red. I look at her. I'm like, oh, that's probably not right. And she, she's always right. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I struggle with that sometimes. And probably another thing is how long it takes me for certain print jobs because I use a, a one color printer and it's, so if something needs like a background white, I have to run it through on white and I have to switch colors and I run it through on the second color and then I run the piece through on the third color. And it just, it, it takes me a long time. There are certain things I like about a one color printer because if I'm printing something in white and it's on a dark color, sometimes it doesn't look white enough. You know, you can still see like the color coming through the background. Mm-hmm. So I can hit, I can hit it with, white twice or if i have to i can hit it a third time and then if the black isn't black enough i can hit it a second time like i can just hit it and then hit it again you know so it gives you a little i i think it gives me more flexibility but i also don't have a three or four color printer maybe there's a way to do it on those i'm not sure but uh um it's just it, it can take a long time depending on the project all right. This question is from Trap Lord Kobe. Would you be interested in making Jordans? I would. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've got a couple uh, different Nike ideas I'd like to do. Um, that would be really fun. Yeah, a lot of people like uh, when I have uh, a sneaker leg release, uh, I'll get DMs saying, "You should make this one. You should make that one. You should make this one." Like. Because I'm not, I'm not a sneakerhead. I don't know. Like I obviously know Jordans and stuff, but I know they're different every year. So people send me like really specific shoe types, and they're like, "Oh, you got to make this one." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't know what this is, but I would like to make uh, different Nikes that looks like this kind of." You know, I I really like to. I've got like Air Force Ones. I'd really like to make like a white Air Force One where it's like mostly white and maybe like little gray like light gray outline so it still looks mostly white i think that would be really cool that might be my next one oh, nice so friend of the pod denise aka brick chick ask how long did it take you to learn how to pad print took me well i'm still learning so let me say <laughs> say that first it seemed like when i first got all my equipment and stuff it took me almost like a couple months to get like a print where I could sit back and say, Hey, that looks halfway decent. You know, there's so many factors that I didn't really consider. Um, like the ink, the way the ink is mixed, the way the plate is, the way humidity is, the way your pads are and like how hard your pad is. There's like a thousand factors to get like a good science. Yeah. And if you're new and there's a problem, you don't know like how to fix it because there's so many different things that could go wrong. So it's, there's a giant learning curve with it. Um, but I think I was making pretty decent stuff and well, I don't know. You guys would probably be a better judge <laughs> how decent it was. I have no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like maybe like I'm a, fan. a few months, I was like making stuff that was okay. But now I look back at it and I'm like, these are super gross. And <laughs> I, sometimes I look back at my old designs that I like, but I'm not happy with the quality by my standards today, you know, with like the things I changed up in the business. And I kind of want to like remake some of that stuff, but it's only like a couple of years old at this point. Like that David figure is one of my first like, big figures I did and uh, David from like Schitt's Creek. And I really want to make a new David very badly because I don't love the way the first one looks. So Vinny Hammerstein and WC asks, will you be making any building sets? Mr. Biggs. That's a quote. Um, 
I, I did like way back in the day in like, I think it was like 2014 or something. I was like making these like mechs with like a printed tile on his chest and stuff. And they were like really fun, but they're very difficult. It's hard to like procure the parts and like build the kits and stuff. So my main passion is minifigures. So I think I'm going to stick to that. Okay. I have one last question. It was, um, we've already answered how the Mike Myers fig came to be. So, but they also were curious if there were any other horror figures you'd be interested in doing. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm not like a huge horror movie fan. I just, when Nick came to me with a design and he was excited about it and I saw the artwork and Mike McHugh, who I've worked with over and over and over was the one who drew it. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. You know, let's do it. But I'm not like super into the movies. So I don't, I don't really have any other plans. Maybe Nick will bring me something else sweet. Hopefully he will. I was going to say, maybe people just message Nick your ideas. <laughs> He'll get all the artwork done. Yeah. Send it to him. Some I finished, send it over to me. <laughs> <laughs> you get it to like the 99% mark. We're, we'll take it over the finish line. Well, that wraps up any questions from the audience. Carrie, did you have anything you'd like to add? I have an audience question for myself. Ooh. Um, Ooh. It's my new favorite question to ask people. So besides or asides from Notorious B.I.G., if you had to give up all of your minifigs but could keep one, which one would you keep? Either you printed it or someone else did it. I don't even like that question. It's hard. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say Biggie. Yeah, you can't no say Biggie. The figure I love is that new Visible Man figure from Citizen Brick. Ever since the first time I saw it, I'm like, yup, like, I need to have that. And I probably need multiple. Just just so I know I have them in case I lose one, you know, that's just, that's just beautiful. I, I love it. I, it's awesome, I love it in yeah. every way. What about you, Brett? I don't know. I was scared. I was hoping <laughs> you were going to ask me. I'm looking behind me right now. Honestly, I get more attached to figures because not of the design, but because of the story behind them. And you know what? I'll start. I'll keep the fig that started it all. My Leco Leco iron spider version one. Um, it has this metallic coat to it. That's just beautiful. That's their UV print company, but they have their own signature metallic look that the sheen that they put over everything. So it doesn't look like race print or anything. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It was my first, like, as you called it, the premium ultra fig, you know, before that I was buying Spidey's off AliExpress, you know, for, you know, 70 cents a pop. And that was my first real, like, I'm in this game now, mini fig. And Leco has always been very, very good to me when they released new Spideys and helping me out. And so they, they, they've been a very big, they've been, I've been their cheerleader as much as they've been my cheerleader. And that, so I think that first fake, because that's what kind of started it all is what I'd stay, I keep. So what about you, Carrie? What would you, let, let's, let's, you know, reverse this. Sorry, no questions. I have a hard time as well, but the first thing that comes to my mind with that reverse Uno question is a overprint of my Citizen Brit commission of my work, my business torso. And it was overprinted with a zombie print. Awesome. And it was a gift and it means the world to me. So thank you. Well, it's, it's everything thank about you, you as a, you in the real world mixed with everything you love about many figures. <laughs> yeah. And it like looks like me. <laughs> Now it feels like I gave a super shallow answer after your two answers. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to stick with all. mine. I mean, if I had let you say Biggie, you would have had like, you know, so that was kind of shitty of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I so pretty much wraps up everything we want to talk about. Al, was there anything you'd like to bring up or plug or, oh wait, you know what we forgot to mention? What? Shirts. You got merch. Mm. Oh yeah, you got it merch the website. You got like lotion. Is that uh, still on? I, it's not still on. Actually. <laughs> Damn it! I, I just no, it was hand I missed soap. It. Is what it was. <laughs> oh, hand soap. I had it on there. I bought one for myself, and then I was looking at my merch section, and I'm like, dude, why you got hand soap on here? Take this off. But as long as I got mine, that's all that matters. Really. <laughs> what was the story yeah. behind that? 
I don't know. It was just like I was looking through. So I've got like a print on demand, like merch section. So you kind of go through like my pieces. You kind of like pick any color shirt you want with whatever design you want. And they kind of print it on demand and send it to you directly. And I was like looking through the products and they had like tea tree oil scented hand soap. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put a design on this. And it'll be kind of fun, you know. And so I put like the Biggie sticker art that uh, Mike had drawn me like back in the day. I put that on there and I put my logo and I'm like, this looks sweet. And so I put it on the website, <laughs> but then I took it down. It was super sweet. Yeah. So I'm probably, I want to grab one of the Miles Spidey uh, figs shirts. And then you also you had your Joe Dirt on there. Actually, I'm surprised you didn't say Joe Dirt would be a fig you want to hang on to since you love oh. the character so much. I do. You can only take one. <laughs> well, isn't the answer? Wait, wait a minute. Isn't the answer then to fig barf several that you want to keep into one? Or well, actually, your wife could take one. Oh, that's cheating. So, which one would your wife take? Well, she, she can take Joe Dirt, and then I'll take uh, Invisible Man. <laughs> there you go. I think, I think the optimal answer is you're just going to fig barf a few that you want to keep into one ultra fig. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually the the Anchorman figure was one of the. Not the mm-hmm. first, but one of the first things Citizen Brick ever printed for me. And it was drawn by my best friend, the Iron, who used to do like all my art and stuff. And so that one's pretty special. So I, I, re- I really like that one too. All right. Well, hey, if nobody else has anything, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to say thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks to everyone for sending in your questions. Look forward to more question prompts in the future as we interview other guests. As usual, if you want to show your support, there'll be links in the show notes. You can go ahead and buy me a coffee. But again, never obligated, but it is always appreciated. That being said, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. So be sure to check out Al ever at minibigs.com. He's always got great drops coming. If not from him, then by his brand partners or his reseller partners that he's worked with. You can find those in the partner hub on the website. And until then, we'll see you later. Say bye. Bye. I want you on my rack I want to make you ring I want you to unwrap I want to pull your string Bring me the next shiny